Hey, today we're going to make this piece of track. And even though it looks really scary, it's not all that bad. So we're going to start by what we're going to, the first I'm going to do is make, I'm going to draw the outside shape here and then extrude it. So this thing is the track piece is the body of it here is 12 inches long. Um, then if you look at right here, the center of this kind of hole right here is 11 inches back from here. So that means that this center is one inch up from the back. And then if you look at this center right here, it is also one inch away from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by making a construction line that's going to be going between the centers of these two arcs. And that construction line will be 12 inches long. Because it's 11 inches to there, one more inch to there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make my sketch in my new part studio. I'm going to rename my part studio to be straight to track. I'm going to make a sketch on the top plane. Wait for this circle to spin a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna make my construction line. I want it to go through the origin. I'm going to, I'm gonna put a midpoint constraint on the construction line and the origin, just so that it locks my, my line in, in place. And then I'm gonna dimension it to be 12 inches. So there's that. <clears throat> now I'm going to um, use a, my rectangle tool to make this big, the big outside rectangle here. And so it's gonna be an inch behind the center of one of them and it's going to go an inch past the center of the other one. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'll start it after this one and go past that one. Then a uh, couple of things I want to do. I want to put a symmetric constraint between the construction line, which is running down, going to be running down the very center of our part and these two edges. So my symmetric constraint is down here. So now you'll see that that keeps the construction line at the, in, the, in the middle between these two. And what is the total width of the track here? It is 3.4. Now that's probably the only measurement I'm going to use from over here because these lines are not easy to easy to um, see. So the total width is 3.4. So I'm going to measure the distance here. Oops, need my distance dimension tool. That's 3.4. And then the um, remember the dimension here was 12 inches. And then it was one inch from the end to the center here. And then it's the same there, but you notice that everything has already turned black because this is 12 inch, because of the measurements that we've already put on, we don't need to put this measurement to be an inch here. That would be over dimensioning it. And if you see, if I try to put this dimension on here, it'll probably put it in gray. And then everything turns red. It's like, ah, bad things are happening because I just over dimensioned. So all I would have to do is just delete that last dimension because everything was already um, fully defined here. Okay, so now I need to uh, make these 
make these um, like kind of puzzle piece shaped stuff where the track pieces fit together. So um, I'm gonna, this part's gonna be an arc. And then I'm gonna have, I need to have a couple of straight lines coming out. Um, and those little straight lines, all we need to do is for the, for the back part here, the distance between the straight lines is going to be 0.65. And on the front part of the part, the distance between these two lines is going to be 0.6. So this one's a little bit skinnier so it can fit in, in there on the next piece, right? So the distance between the back ones is 0.65 and the distance between the front ones is 0.6. So I'm going to start with those little, those little straight lines there. So I'm gonna get my line tool. And I'm going to make a horizontal line here. And then I'm gonna come down here and make another horizontal line. And I want that, I want that um, relation to pop up, that, that um, vertical constraint right there. So that, so I'm gonna escape out of my line tool so that these two points have to stay lined up vertically. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the construction line and both of these and put a symmetric constraint on those also, because I want those to be centered around the, the center of the piece. So now you can see that if I move one, they stay centered. And the distance between these, this, was, this is the back where it's gonna be the cutout, the hole that's cut out. That distance is 0.65. So I now get my dimension tool and I say the distance between these guys is 0.65. And now this is the center of the arc. So I'm going to use my, my center point arc tool. I'll click here on the center then once on that line and once at the other vertex and the radius of that arc is 0.75 so i can just before i click on anything else right after i place the arc i can just type in 0.75 if you already clicked on something else, then all you would have to do is um, is just use your dimension tool to put that radius on that arc. So now I'm gonna do a similar process up here. Oops. I'm gonna do a similar process. Oh, where did we go? Okay, there we go. We're gonna do a similar process for the front part here. Let's we'll start with a couple of straight lines, um, make them symmetric about the center line, and then put an arc. So line tool. So we're from here coming out horizontally. And you want the vertical, uh, the vertical constraint implied right there. Then I'm going to select the center line and then these two segments, to put a symmetric constraint. And then I'm going to dimension the distance between them, which is uh, 0.6. So the dimension between these guys is 0.6. Now I am going to get my center point arc tool centered there from this vertex around to that vertex. And the radius of this arc is 0.7. So now we are done with this sketch. Now here's a here's something that I would recommend that you do when you're finished with your sketch before you go to do your extrude. 
um, because while you're still in your sketch, exit out of your tools, you can select the regions that you want to extrude. So I, you can pre-select them like this. So that's one way to make sure that you're going to be able to select the right things when you do your extrude. So I'm going to pre-select those two regions. And then I'm going to accept my sketch. And then when I hit extrude, it automatically infers that I want to um, extrude those two regions. And the depth is, or the height here, um, it's one inch. So one inch, that's good. So that is the extrude there. Now, once we have the extrude, um, now it, it names the part for us. It gives us a part. So we're going to rename our part. Straight track. And now let's look back at our picture and see what else we need to do. To this. So a couple of things that we need to do. We need to cut out the little grooves for the train wheels to go through. And we need to, um, if you look, there's a fillet on this edge right here. It says the radius is 0.19 times four. So there's four of these fillets. There's one, there's two down here and two up here. And it's maybe easier to see them right here. There's the 0.19 radius on this, these two fillets. Here's the 0.19 radius on these two fillets. And in my experience with on shape, it's a little bit easier to do the a fillet on on your um, on your part than in the sketch for some reason. So I'm going to get my my fillet tool here. I'm going to set the radius to 0.19. And then I'm going to go around and just click on the this line here. This one here. That one. And that one. So now you can see that I've got these little edges rounded off, those little corners rounded off now. So I am going to, then the last thing we need to do is, is cut out these grooves. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sketch on the back of this thing. So I'm going to select this piece right here, hit sketch. And then I'll push N to get a normal view. I'm going to rotate it, though, because I want it flat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of rectangles. And I want to start from up here. So there will be one of the grooves and then another rectangle for the other group. Now, it'll make it, I'll, it'll have to do, I'll, it'll save me a dimension later on if I just, make this horizontal because they're going to be at the same level you know so now i just need to get the dimensions on here for like the how deep it is and then how far away it is from the edge so the easiest place to see it is on this picture down here i think you can see that the depth here is 0.25 the depth of the little groove is 0.25 I'll go do that one right now. So the dimension from here to there is 0.25. And when I hit enter, it should adjust both squares or both rectangles. Okay, so now we've got from, from the edge over to the first edge of the groove, that's 0.4. And then over to the next side of it is 0.75. So 0 0.4 and then 0.75. So from here to there is 0.4. From here to there 
is 0.75. And then for the other side, that is 0.265, I mean 2.65 and 3.0. So 2.65 and 3.0. So from here to there, 2.65. Um, here to there. Three inches. And then again, I can check. I'm going to exit out of my little tools and I'm going to select both of these squares. Then say okie dokie. Then extrude. It starts off trying to add. We want to switch to remove. So it's cutting away. And we can just say through all. Check. And now we have got our uh, train track now. All done to diddly. <laughs>